Hello and welcome. In this episode, we will go through the intelligence mechanic within Nebula's Fleet Command. Intelligence helps you make informed decisions on the battlefield. You can use intelligence to determine whether a ship is a threat or to prioritize targets during an engagement. Intelligence will provide you a number of details about the enemy fleet, including visual and non-visual indicators, such as the conditions of internal components, the names of a ship, the hull class, and the ship's status. Whilst you can look for some of the visual indicators for this information, during the middle of a battle, it, it can be quite hard to determine and look at a particular ship while you're trying to maintain focus on the wider surrounding battles. Before we understand how the intelligence mechanic works, we have to understand the components and the statistics that come together in order to generate intelligence. So there are four components within the game that will be the main contributors to your intelligence gathering. These include the three CICs and the intelligence center. The basic and the reinforced CIC perform it in the same way, and all ships will need to take a basic CIC to begin with, which means all ships are capable of gathering intelligence by themselves. The Citadel CIC, whilst offering the benefits of the component itself, will also provide increased intelligence gathering and can be fitted on all ships from a destroyer up to a battleship. You most likely see the Citadel CICs on the heavy cruiser or the battleship due to the larger component spaces that are found on those two ships, as well as the points cost not being worthwhile on a smaller ship. Finally, we have the Intelligence Center, which is the best component for intelligence gathering. Again, it can fit on all ships from the destroyer up to the battleship, but the same will apply most likely seeing this component on the heavy cruiser and the battleship. The Intelligence Center, however, will need to be taken in addition to one of the below components, as it will give the best intelligence gathering capability for your fleet. However, it won't give any command and control functionality that the CICs will provide to your ships. Each component will provide a level of intelligence effort. You can see that on the component stat card on the screen, However, I've pulled that out into the big white numbers for ease of viewing. The intelligence effort will determine how quickly enemy ship's information is initially revealed and then subsequently updated. The larger the number, the faster it will occur. Enemy ships are analyzed by your intelligence gatherers in two ways. Firstly, the CICs will all analyze local tracks, which means they will analyze the enemy ships that are within their sensor range and coverage. For example, if you split your fleet in two and position on the different sides of the map, you as a player will be able to see the big tactical picture. However, your, each of your fleets will be limited to what they can see within their sensor range. So the further you can see, the further that you can analyze. The intelligence center, however, is different. It can analyze all tracks. And it does this by being in comms range and communication with all ships within your fleet and any multiplayer fleets that are on your team during a battle. This gives the intelligence center a benefit over the other CICs not only being able to operate faster, but to analyze everything that your side can see whilst it remains on the battlefield. A point to note here is that only the largest effort will ever be used in the calculation. On the screen, you can see a hypothetical fleet comprised of four frigates, two light cruisers, and a battleship. To the right is the intelligence gathering component that ship is equipped with, with the level of effort appearing as a number above that hull. As mentioned, only the largest effort will ever be used. So, as the Intelligence Center is equipped to the battleship, 15 effort will always be used in the Intelligence Gathering calculation, and as the Intelligence Center can operate across the fleet using communications, it will provide its effort to everything that this fleet can see. If for whatever reason the Intelligence Center in the battleship is destroyed, then each of the ships will revert back to analyzing local tracks, again, what they can only see with their sensors, and for the highest amount. So if each fleet was split to different sides of the map, the light, each light cruiser would then provide its level of effort to intelligence gathering in its area of the battlefield. Military intelligence isn't always so, and the fog of war and the confusion of battle impedes an accurate picture. This is represented in Nebula's Fleet Command through the intelligence accuracy statistic, or as it should be called, intelligence inaccuracy. Each component has a degree of inaccuracy in the information that it gathers and assesses. Before we look at the intelligence inaccuracy for each component, we need to understand what it is assessing. Each ship will have a condition percentage that will update over time once you've fully assessed the enemy ship. The condition percentage is the number of functioning components in a ship that were brought into battle that are still operational. So if we took an example of a frigate deploying into a battle with four components, that ship would have 100% condition percentage. If that ship had two components that were destroyed, 
then the frigate's condition percentage would be 50%. So if we look now to the bars on the screen, we can take that true condition percentage and add the intelligence and accuracy modifier of each component to understand the range of values that may be randomly returned to us when we update the condition percentage as part of the intelligence gathering process. The worse a component is at gathering intelligence, the greater degree of inaccuracy. So in the context of the frigate example, with a true condition of 50%, a basic CIC or a reinforced CIC may return a random value somewhere between 20% and 80%, and this can move around. We may get an initial percentage of 25%, and then a subsequent condition percentage as we add better components to our ship for intelligence gathering, that intelligence accuracy decreases. So we can see here at the top, the intelligence center with the same condition percentage will return a value somewhere between 35 and 65%. So we can make more informed decisions based on that report than we could from a basic CIC. Hull difficulty is how difficult it is for your intelligence to understand what is occurring on a particular hull. All hulls have an initial identification difficulty of 200, with modifiers applying to increase the identification difficulty. This statistic is less of a variable and more of a constant, as the majority of players would not be bringing any modifiers to this statistic. So how does it work? First we have to understand that each ship has a number of intelligence states, which are pieces of information that are progressively revealed as your intelligence works to understand and decipher the enemy ship and fleet. Intelligence states are revealed progressively. Upon first identifying a ship, the track number and unknown represented in the white box requiring zero effort will be revealed to you. The four states are then revealed progressively in packet one with an even distribution in time. Packet two is a little bit slower with only two intelligence states revealed in this packet and requires a subsequent 250 effort. At the completion of packet two or 450 effort in total, you will fully understand the details around an enemy ship. Your intelligence analysts, however, will not stop there. They will provide continual updates of the enemy ships. However, it'll be significantly slower at 400 effort per update. So this is calculated using the intelligence effort of your fleet based on the components previously discussed. Every second, this number will increase until the effort threshold is met and the information is revealed. The only time these base efforts are modified is when the hull identification difficulty is modified by one of the other components, which we'll discuss towards the end of this video. So let's have a look at the numbers and how long it takes for each of the components to move through the intelligence states previously described. On the screen, you can see the intelligence states on the left with the representative packets by color and the effort above each of the components on the top row. The time in seconds is then progressively displayed down to the second update. The testing scenario for this resulted in each of the ships equipped with one of the intelligence gathering components working to identify the same ships, culminating after two updates after packet two. For people who don't want to go through and do the math and convert back to minutes, I've put a summary down at the bottom of the page. This is a standalone packet time in minutes and is not cumulative as shown above. What this means is that packet one takes three minutes and 21 seconds in order to fully complete its analysis. Packet 2 takes 4 minutes and 12 seconds for itself, which makes sense as, the, as there is 50 more effort to work through as opposed to Packet 1, and that each subsequent update of 400 effort takes 6 minutes and 43 seconds. So to fully analyze a ship before an update takes roughly 7.5. If you look towards the right and through the other levels of effort provided by the other components, you'll see that a Citadel CIC is fairly fast in providing its updates and would be reasonable in a game of Nebulous Fleet Command to take two minutes to fully analyze a ship and then a subsequent one minute 41 seconds for an update. The Intelligence Center is by far the best, not only with its smallest inaccuracy but its faster upload times. However, you could get away with a Citadel CIC, although you would lose the benefit of the fleet-wide analysis with the Intelligence Center. If you have any questions regarding the calculations, please throw them down in the comments below. And I'll also include the scenario that I worked through in the description. In looking at the intelligence states, most are quite clear in what they do. A warship, the class, the hull, the name. However, we haven't explained what the ship's status is. Ship status can only be one of four things. The first is nothing, as the ship is fine and there is no statuses applied. And then the three ship statuses that you'll actually see. Ship not under command, harmless and immobilized. 
A ship that is not under command has its CIC destroyed. It cannot move and it cannot fire or engage. It needs to repair that CIC in order to regain functionality and continue to operate. Harmless means that there are no offensive weapons usable and this may be because all the weapon components are destroyed or you've successfully destroyed all the ammunition with one of your other weapon systems. Finally is immobilize. The drives are no longer operational and you can visually check this by looking around at the thrusters to see if it has a glow or if it doesn't. An important thing to note about ship status, you have to wait for an update for this to change. So you need to be wary when making decisions regarding the ship status. As just because it says harmless now, doesn't mean that the ship isn't actively working to restore one of the components to get it back into combat. You wouldn't believe it, but intelligence can be lost. This can occur when the two conditions are met. First, a track needs to be lost off your sensor picture. This means that it disappears and you can no longer see it. This can be negated by continually positioning your ships so that you can always see the ships that you are tracking. The other condition is that that ship has to move more than 2.5 kilometers away from its known position, its last known position. So for example, if you were to spot a Corvette and then it was to move off, you lost that track and then it moved a subsequent 2.5 kilometers to go capture another point. When that ship came back, it would be reassigned a new track number and then you must move through the intelligence packets in order to regain the intelligence of that ship before subsequent updates can be made. This can be quite unnerving in battle when a ship may disappear and then reappear being the same ship. However, it may give the illusion that there are other ships that the enemy fleet still has in reserve uh, that are now coming fresh into the fight. So to combat, you really want to keep those ships, once you identify them, within your sensor range so you know where they are at all times and how they're going. Finally, we can come to the modifiers, of which there are three. The Masquerade Signature Booster looks like an interruption jammer. However, its main purpose is to increase the radar signature size of your ship and increase the identification difficulty. Noting that the power draw is quite significant and that most ships don't want to increase their radar signature. This component in particular isn't one that I would necessarily take or see a lot of people taking. A point to note as well is that in my testing, neither the Masquerade nor the Signature Scrambler affected the Intel effort calculations in Packet 1 and only affected Packet 2 as well as the subsequent updates in how much effort it took to slow down the calculations. Increasing your radar signature can give the illusion that it is a larger ship. However, this is basically negated once your ship moves through packet one and the hull and class are identified. If we jump across to the signature scrambler, I believe this one's in the exact same boat that it won't really be taken. It has a fair power draw and it is more expensive than the masquerade signature booster. It does provide a better bonus to identification difficulty, making it harder to get updates on your ship as well as not occupying one of your weapon mount slots. The, however, the drawback here is the, the sensitivity which affects your radar. In, in a game where the sensitivity of your radar can determine whether or not you, you identify and spot an enemy ship or not, you don't want to make that any worse than you already are. So it doesn't make sense to take the signature scrambler and destroy your own radar just so that your identification can be a little bit harder. This can be com combated with some of the modifiers for radars, however, you're then effectively paying additional points for two underperforming components. Finally, the only one that I would really recommend taking would be the analysis annex. Noting how fast the intelligence center already operates, you can actually get away with not using the anal uh, analysis annex unless you have the, the points free and you have some slots free on one of your larger ships. This component is ship specific in its modifier, so as we spoke about the largest effort being used within the fleet, if you had an intelligence center on one of your battleships and you had an analysis annex with a Citadel CIC, well, whilst the Citadel CIC will increase its effort to 5.2, the intelligence center will always be used as it is the larger effort. If you do, if you do pair it with the intelligence center, it is gonna operate significantly faster um, as it is a percentage-based bonus. So your intelligence center will start working close to 20 intelligence effort per second. It also comes with the, a benefit that your intelligence inaccuracy goes down 30% and that's represented on screen. If we were to take the example from before, this, that's represented by the green bar on the screen. So that ends this tutorial on intelligence. It is a good mechanic in the game to assist you in your decision making, whether you want to continue to attack a ship that is immobilized or harmless, or to gauge how smaller and larger ships 
internal conditions are going. Like all good things, it can't be fully relied upon and it's there as a, as a tool to assist you as opposed to to lean on as a crutch. So next time you go into battle, have a look at the intelligent states of the enemy ships and use them to make those decisions 